I spent the last few weeks interviewing migrants in New York City, and what we found were a lot of desperate people, actually, many of them from West Africa who did not have any work papers, who had just arrived, who had no idea how the system worked. And then we also found a whole system in which people were using other people's social security numbers in order to get the documentation they needed to work as DoorDash drivers and Uber Eats drivers. So it was kind of this like chaotic situation. Having said all this, it's the ways in which people found work were also interesting. Um, you had some migrants making food for other migrants. You had other migrants selling coffee on the streets. You even had, which was amazing in Brooklyn, outside of an intake center and uh, an enrollment center for the New York City ID card, you even had a group of migrants charging other recently arrived migrants for a space in line. So people were coming at 3 a.m. to to line up to get these um, identity cards. And some of the migrants were charging money for, for their space in line, which I thought was like, you know, the ultimate of sort of this make work thing. Also, you know, you have the situation where because people are working in this underground economy, they're not paying taxes, they're not getting the benefit of paying taxes. So it's kind of a, a free for all. And the stories that the people had of coming from just all over the world on these long journeys through several countries. I, I spoke to one guy from uh, Mauritania who couldn't read or write, but he had managed to get somebody to write on a piece of cardboard that he was a carpenter with a phone number to call. And I asked him, well, why did you choose to come to New York? Why didn't you go somewhere warm like California? And he just looked at me and he said, I just wanted to leave. I had no idea where I was going. I had no idea it was going to be so cold here. I just wanted to leave to make money for my family, to 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 one day be able to bring my wife and three kids to America. So in his mind, there was this like mythical America as this great place. And in fact, he was standing outside in the cold at a Lowe's in Brooklyn, trying to just make a few dollars by helping people load um, their cars with insulation and sheetrock and lumber. So a lot, a lot of sad stories out there. A lot of business owners we spoke to, especially in the restaurant sector, they really want to hire these people who are willing to do jobs that uh, you know a lot of Americans just don't want to do. But the problem is they have no legal right to work in, in the United States. So it becomes a real problem for a business owner to hire them. Um, sometimes they will actually use for a fee, another more established immigrant social security card. When they do that, it becomes chaotic for the business owner who has to sort of justify to the federal government that the person that he's retained to work is the person on the social security card. Because, you know, the scams are many. Ultimately, the business owners get hurt. So that's why they don't chance it anymore. Um, I was also talking to a contractor who does a lot of work on Long Island um, in the residential home sector. And he was saying the same thing. It's just not worth it. It's such a liability if they get if they get hurt on the job, you know, we're out thousands of dollars and they have no way to pay insurance costs or, or, or health care costs. It becomes a big problem for everybody, not just the, the person seeking work, but the person hiring them illegally.